Whether it be nailing that sweet, sweet interview or meeting your girlfriend or boyfriend's parents for the first time, first impressions, or how you introduce yourself for the first time is always going to be important. So to that end, Brian Von VA here, how did you introduce your last character? Charmed the entire party. The campaign started in a tavern and all the players were being loners at separate tables. As a College of Glamour bard, I was performing and used enthralling performance on my soon-to-be party to get them all to the same table. Hey, that's a really good idea. They all failed their wisdom saves, so the first hour in-game was them giving me a massage, followed by a few rounds of drinks on me. DM told me that after the session that he was going to have the tavern break out in a bar fight to get the party together, but said I made his job a lot easier pulling that stunt. I play in two different groups, so I have two different characters. Wednesday's group. At the funeral service of my previous two characters, my third was one of the pallbearers, along with the rest of the party. He's a 10th level Scourge ASMR wild magic sorcerer named Nocturne. And he focuses mainly, but not exclusively, on ice-based spells. Monday group. Flicker a split personality girl that uses a special amulet to swap between her two forms. Flicker Alpha is the more kind, gentle, and playful side, and is a fourth level half-elf cleric. Her other form is Flicker Delta, a fifth level drow fighter. She is more focused on melee and has a more <laughs> uh, bitchy personality, for the lack of a better term or more accurate term. The Alpha form is her base form. She was found within a prison in Avernus, guarded by three Valkyrie guards. After being set free and being reunited with her weapons and amulet, she joined the party in the fight to kill the guards. Mechanically, it is a bonus action to use the amulet swap forms mid-combat. Both forms share the same HP, armor class, and initiative, but have different rolled stats, and only one saving throw proficiency per form. They also alternate level ups. Cheating on a card game. I was playing a wild card rogue who believed solely on luck and said that not even the gods could go against it. However, nothing dictated that you couldn't turn it in your favor with some <clears throat> minor corrections. The party was playing cards when my character approached and asked to join. Three rounds later, I was getting most of their gold in my pockets, and they genuinely believed I was legit as my sleight of hand checks were all really good. Then the barbarian <laughs> lost his temper as he didn't like losing, flipped the table and threw it to the other side of the tavern, which made a fight to break out. We all fought together, and my character asked to join them. He was being chased at that moment of the story, so he figured this group of particularly skilled individuals could protect him. After like, I don't know, five sessions, he starts to see them as his friends, and returns all the money with interest. Two stories for this, dun 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 dun, and they both involve my wizard Delkesh. Hey, we've heard of Delkesh before, I'm sure. The very first session of D&D I played, Delkesh was sitting at the bar in a tavern when two other party members walked in, already drunk from the last tavern they just got kicked out of. The dragonborn fighter walks in, trips over his own shoes, and falls over against the bar, bumping Delkesh and knocking his drink out of his hand. I said in my best Weevil Underwood voice, What the actual fuck? And that was how Delkesh was introduced to the world. The second story, I was playing Delkesh as an old man version of himself in a second campaign years later. He was supposed to only be in the campaign long enough to help get the campaign rolling, and then he was going to retire or sacrifice himself to save the party, uh, whatever. Well, it never happened so the DM and I decided to work on an exit for him. One session while we were in Candlekeep investigating a string of ritualistic murders, the DM describes these three investigators who come in to assist. Two of them are male paladins, and the third is a female cleric. The DM describes the paladins and the cleric going into pretty decent detail about all of them, including noting the cleric's eyes are solid white with no discernible pupil and the symbol of Helm on the cleric's belt buckle. Conversations are had, 
Del Cash is talking to the two paladins about some of the clues they'd found, and the rest of the party is getting in on the conversation. At one point, one of the NPC paladins turns to the cleric and asks her a question. I responded with the answer to the question in character. And that's how Dova got introduced to the party before Delkesh had even left. I introduced my half-orc to the party just as his human mother bust into the tavern and yelled at him for trying to be an adventurer, and he had to promise to come back for his brother's birthday in a month. So, cut to after the first quest and the party is trying to make small talk with about <laughs> 20 orcs. We had done our session 0 in groups and 2 and 3. So for session 1, we started out in combat against Sahuagin, and we met each other based on turn order. My half-drow bard runs in, heals the barbarian without knowing his name, and insulted one of the Sahuagin to do psychic damage. I've been stealth beforehand, so from the POV of the party, the heal had been a surprise to everyone, and my first words in campaign was telling a fish person he smelled like last week's catch. Friday Group A Let me set the scene that the party first met at a festival. My, at the time, this being his sole class, trickery cleric Chardon himself was introduced as jingling his money in his pouch, walking with a jaunty sort of pace, flicking his bangs out of his eyes, seeming kind of vain. He finds one of those three-card type Monty buskers and decides to test his luck at it almost immediately to cement a sort of tricksty gambler motif. He manages to win the whole sack of money and gives this trickster-like thank you, my good man, chirp, before leaving with a jaunty smile. What the DM never knew? This was me telegraphing early on that his multi-class was going to be the ultimate gambler, Wild Magic Sorcerer. Friday Group B. Now this one is the one that takes place in a youth survivalist camp. <laughs> and because I have an alternate younger version of my big tricky cleric boy, let me set the scene how this younger Shardan solely wild magic sorcerer is introduced. The party, who at the time are all camp counselors, are called to the camp's director's cabin to introduce themselves and get their jobs. Chardin is introduced as running late, a little scuffed up from a good trail run, one hand resting on a flute at his hip, and the other waving eagerly. Oh, kind of cute. My character's cat familiar was knocking everything off of the quest giver's desk. You stand in the presence of Desperau, infamous swordsman, robber of both coins and hearts. You may hold your applause, simply genuflect or kneel. Uh, mm -mm, uh well, excuse me, what does genuflect mean? No, no, you're supposed to... Uh, <laughs> you're ruining my introduction. I had it all planned out. Just fine. Just walk backwards a couple steps. I'll get back into position. We'll try this again. And that's how I introduced my actor bar. Drop kicking a bandit into a tavern. My character was a Goliath barbarian, and he was extremely stupid, and he didn't like people giving him crap for it. There was a bandit camp nearby, and the bandits liked to poke fun at him. So my character hunted them down and delivered them to the town the party was in. This filthy girl who looks like a vagabond walks over to the table. The bartender and some of the patrons look in her direction, sniff the air, and... Their faces turn sour. Her clothes are ripped, and you can see traces of blood mixed in with the mud smeared all over her. One side of her face is bruised. As she approaches, you understand the expression on the other's faces. She smells like she just stepped out of a sewer. She is carrying a full blade on her shoulder, that is, larger than her, and in immaculate condition. Except that it looks like the edge has been filed to where it's rounded. A holy symbol of Ray is worn from her neck. From what you can make out, her hair may be blonde and her eyes glow a faint blue. The other people at the table are introducing themselves. She stays quiet and listens to each one. Then, they all focus on her. Hey, I'm Cariel. Mind if I tag along? 
She lays the full blade on the table. You can hear the legs creak from the weight of the thing. They look at each other, Mo shrug. A human wearing armor that looks like he dug from the dumps says, Sure. A bard wearing very fine clothes asks, Why do you stink? Kariol blushes slightly and just says, Sorry, I'll try to clean up some. She picks up a bottle of strong whiskey the others ordered, turns it up, and doesn't put it down until it empties. That was good. Got any more? So started Carol joining her new family. My bard had died, and my friends were escaping after killing a king and burning his castle. My new character, a sorcerer paladin, had met a member after his tumble down a very long flight of stairs, kung fu panda style. Offering aid before immediately recognizing him through a wanted poster due to the party's previous escapades in a desert kingdom, and thus drawing her sword on him to arrest him and the whole party. Of course, the main characters must work together due to a tattoo on everyone's hand, thus her hand was forced to escape with them. Now, due to how I play, she is comic relief, because that's how I have fun. As an example, losing a fight with a coconut. That shit was gold. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA here, back at it again. Hey, leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell. Why? Because then you get to get notified anytime we post, because YouTube typically notifies you really poorly. With the bell rung, now you can get notified really greatly. It's a stellar transition. If you want to check us out live, do so on Twitch. And for 30 to 60 second videos, check us out on TikTok. And if you want to submit a story, sure, you can use the comments, but we don't always take from those. We primarily go to our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. Link is in the description below for everything I just stated. Eh, probably not including me, Brian Von VA, who you can come see just on Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, whatever the hell you want to come see me on. And as always, I want to just end things with a little bit of happiness or positivity. Sometimes I go with the happiness route, sometimes positivity, it all depends. That being said, I just want to say one thing today, as usual. I have worked very, very hard the past couple years on becoming a better person, and it was not a linear path. In fact, it was pretty much a very, very strange and wiggly squiggly path. I don't understand it myself, but I got there in the end, and it was because I, I gave up. Yeah, <laughs> I got somewhere from giving up, but let me explain. If you sit down based on how you feel or what you deal with on a daily basis, and you just say one day, fuck it, I'm done and you just go forward, you will go forward. It's like getting angry at failure and just saying, fuck this, I'm not going to fail anymore. You're right. When you start not giving a fuck about situations and you start giving more of a fuck about, you know, hey, I'm going to put effort towards me. I don't give a shit if I win or lose. I don't give a shit what people think of me. I'm a good person. I'm smart. I'm capable. And if I don't know something, I'll fucking learn. Then you're going to get better. Believe me, it works. It, it doesn't work for everybody the same way. Every movement is different. Like when you exercise, you're going to have a different movement here and there. But that's okay. Find what works for you. Say fuck it and keep going because all of you have that power. You just don't know it yet. But now you do because I told you. And if you do, then hey, go forward and be yourself. I love you all. I really do. Smile. Be happy. Be healthy. Stay hydrated. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.